deal or what? Okay, then. Let's talk business. This is a war zone. There's product coming in here by the truckload. And you'll be picking up a lot of guns in the field, I'm sure. Whatever guns you don't need, I'll take and buy them off. That'll earn you points you can cash in for service. Like what? I'll launder your ID guns. No more locks. And I can also sell you the guns I've got in stock. Let me show you. Sure, you can use non ID guns. I'm gonna have to suppress the old nano machines you got in. Otherwise, they'll interfere with the system. Here, stick yourself with this. It's full of suppressor nano machines. Relax, it won't hurt. You're scared of needles or something? Pick up an ID gun that says lock. You just let me know. You name it, I can launder it. Of course, it'll cost you. The going rate depends on the war price at the time. Man, I gotta give this shit a rest. Looks like you're doing pretty well for yourself. You might say that. What with the war economy and all. System clamping down on things. System codes of a law now. And controls essentially absolute. Paving the way for fat profits if you're willing to bend the law. The man keeps on growing things to the water kind. I sell ID guns to the PMCs and state armies. And naked guns to terrorist groups and paramilitaries. And these ID guns can't be sold on the black market. System's practically a license for us arms dealers to print money. Privatizing the military has made the PMCs big, loaded. The fatter the PMCs get, the line between civilian and soldier is gonna get real blurry.
what you're thinking. But Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price. One that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. <laughs> it's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are going to get. Now, to put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor. The Mark II can act as a kind of delivery board, connect you with it. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cache. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Drebin has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. and get to the rendezvous point with our informants. First, you'll have to get to the other side of that collapsed building. The only way across is straight through. Yeah. Careful, Snake. The walls could come down any second. Put your solid on our night vision and...
that's it for this episode. I'll see you later.